Innal hamdalillah Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdillahu fa huwa almuhtad wa man yudlillahu falan tajida lahu waliyya murshida innahu asdaqal kalamu kalamullah wa khairal hadi hadi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umuru muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bir'ah wa kulla bir'atin dalalah wa kulla dalalatan fil nar amma ba'ad Assalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin Habibina wa nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Wa man ihtada bi ihsanin ila yawmid din Amma ba'd Faqala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-Quran al-Kareem Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sending shukur to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala On this blessed day of Jumu'ah On this day that we remember him as we are compelled to on this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world, on this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring this world to an end. The most blessed days of the week that we sit here to remember the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us by obedience to Him, showing obedience to Him, and be reminded of our duty towards Him. We send our salam and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions, on all those who follow him in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters, today, inshallah, my reminder with us today will be on the ayah that I recited in the beginning of the khutbah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala followed that ayah by saying وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعٌ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ And a few ayahs later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned كُنْتُمْ خَيْرًا أُمَّةً أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ The first of these ayahs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not die except as one who is a Muslim. As one who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except as one who surrenders to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ayah, albeit very short, it is a very, very profound commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us as believers. And the reason I am I would like for us to be reminded about this ayah is that it speaks to us about something that we hear very often but very little do we contemplate upon it in our lives. The word taqwa. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqwa Allah. O you who believe have taqwa of Allah. Have fear of Allah. That is one thing. Be conscious of Allah is part of it. 
Be aware of Allah is another thing. All of these are important qualities a Muslim should have as they live their life every second of the day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, He said, Have taqwa of Allah wherever you are, whatever you're doing. So what is taqwa? Taqwa is a sense of fear of Allah, fear of the punishment of Allah. Taqwa is also a sense of fear of being disobedient to Allah because He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it. Let's say you have our Imam in front here. You respect him, you know him, you love him. Would you want to do something that is not right because you fear he's going to beat you? Or you're afraid, you're afraid or you're worried about how he thinks about you? Think about your parents, for example. Maybe they won't beat you, they won't hurt you. But there's a certain type of fear of doing something in front of them out of respect, out of love. It's another aspect of taqwa. But the point I would like to focus on here today is being aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our life by maintaining a spiritual and moral consciousness that guides our actions. Islam is a religion that was sent, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I was not sent except to perfect good manners. Utamimul akhlaq. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And if we examine this religion, everything that we do, there's a methodology to it. From the way we use the bathroom, to the way we enter the masjid, to the way we put on our clothes, how we greet our neighbor, how we deal with our family, how we speak to our youngsters. All of this encapsulates taqwa. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is seeing you. Allah is aware of you wherever you are, even if you go to hide in the deepest, darkest pits of the ocean. Under layers of darkness, Allah knows what you're doing, He knows what is in your heart. My dear brothers and sisters, Iman grows within our heart, and a heart devoid of taqwa cannot have Iman. And this true belief that we seem to profess so often, that I believe in Allah, but yet we live a life continuously of sin, without every, any sense of consequences sometimes. Taqwa shapes our character. It refines our behavior and elevates our spiritual standing. It is not just avoiding sin, but actively doing good. Seeking knowledge, being just, showing kindness, and being patient in times of trials and tribulations. My dear Muslim brothers and sisters, today the Ummah is in a state of trials and tribulations. The entire Ummah today is in a state of trial and tribulations and have been for a very long time. So how do we act? How do we behave in these times matters? As the Ummah is faced with trials, as you are faced with trials, the first thing we should do is to reflect. Reflect on ourselves. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues in the next ayah, He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and hold firmly to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hold firmly to this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hold firmly to these words that you claim to profess. Hold firmly to this belief that make you a Muslim. Jami'an, together, in unity. This word unity, togetherness, we will find it very often in the teachings of Islam. Subhanallah, today is Yawmul Jumu'ah. One of the meaning of Jumu'ah, of Jama'ah is coming together, gathering. And we see gathering and coming together so often encouraging Islam, so much so that a man who prays in the masjid receives 27 times more reward than a man who prays at home. So important it was for us to be together, gather together. The Prophet 
Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said that the mu'minun, that the believers are but one brotherhood. And this is a time that we must exemplify that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hold firmly to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. And remember Allah's favor upon you that when you were enemies. And this is a reminder to the people in Medina. Before the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he migrated to Medina. There were two warring tribes in Medina, the Aus and the Khazraj. And with Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was able to bring them and bridge their enmity. Sometime later, some of the enemies of Islam that were living in Medina at the time from the people of the book, they would pass by and see these former enemies sitting together as if they are one. And he would remark to them that you used to be enemies. What happened now? How are you being like this? And there's a longer story to that. But the point is, my dear brothers and sisters, Islam unites us regardless of our differences. If we look to our right and look to our left, you will see a person of a different skin color than you, of a different age than you, of a different ethnicity than you. And so many differences, this is what brings the beauty of Islam. But very often we find ourselves dividing ourselves over silly things. United we are strong and divided we fall and we have fell, my dear brothers and sisters. This ummah, the unity of the ummah was kept together for over a thousand years. From the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the end of the First World War as we know it. And many issues contributed to this. Primarily among them, the Muslims start disuniting between themselves, siding with the enemies of Islam. Today, how does this relate to us? How often do we find ourselves having a problem with our own blood, brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and children? But a stranger who would betray us for anything, we want to be closer to them and we try to make as if they are closer to us. Much less our Muslim brothers and sisters. Today, the trip, trials and tribulations of our Muslim brothers and sisters in places like Palestine and Burma and China and Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Kashmir, India. So many places Muslims are targeted. The first action that we must do as much as we're thinking globally, we must act locally. How do we behave where we are now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, remember Allah's favor upon us, that you were enemies and he bring you together. He united our hearts. If we claim to be Muslims, we must be united. Today is the time that we mend our differences. Every day is an opportunity for a Muslim to make a positive change in their life. We are worrying about our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine. Good, make dua for them. Do whatever you can do to help them. But your first responsibility is to yourself. Save yourself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. Save yourself from the fire of Jahannam. That's the first commandment. And your family. Then your family. Then everybody else. We have to worry about ourselves too. It is good we make dua. It is good we bring awareness to it. It is good we send our money. But will that impact our lives until, unless we decide to take tangible efforts, practical efforts to make that change in our life? Do we want today that one masjid here has a problem with that masjid there? This Muslim has a problem with that Muslim. Oh, you are on the right and you are on the wrong. And we saw fighting between ourselves. Instead of uniting, under the banner of brotherhood, Islam gains strength. Under the banner of brotherhood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this ni'mah. This was a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Under this black banner of brotherhood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the Muslim, give them izzah in the entire world. 
Subhanallah, our actions, the actions of Muslims are more influential than our words. Ittaqillah, my dear brothers and sisters. Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of developing this brotherhood is inclusivity. Embrace each other. Not because this is a guy in his masjid, or a guy in his build this masjid and make it a guy in his masjid. Or a Trinidadian masjid, or a Yemeni masjid, or an Arab masjid, or a West Indian masjid. No! Allah gave us that ni'mah that we can build a house of worship for Him that is welcoming for all. Regardless of our differences as human beings. Include each other in everything that you do. Especially in the times of happiness. Build relationship out of, outside of your comfort circle. We all have groups of friends that we would hang out with. You know, family that we would be around all the time. We shouldn't keep it close to that. And we see the sunnah in the life of the Prophet and the Muslims in Medina when, when migration took place. The first establishment within the first Islamic state was what brotherhood. Random people, strangers, taking Muslims into their homes and sharing their wealth with them. To help them. Today we have so much opportunities to open doors for each other, to help each other. And yet we don't. Is this brotherhood? Is this Muslim brotherhood? We would look at the kuffar and say they are one for themselves. Yes, they take care of their own. Do we take care of our own? Do we take care of our own? Are we looking out for our own? And our own isn't our ethnicity. We are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are one another to each other. Family, brothers and sisters to one another. Showing tolerance and understanding. One of the things that I've learned in life is that each one of us have different cultures and practices. And sometimes we might see, see others, their cultures and practices come in conflict with ours. Does it mean that we reject it? No. No. The fundamentals of Islamic law is based on differences of doing things in accordance to the sunnah. Subhanallah, even the Quran is, can be recited. Uh, we have 10 different dialects of reciting the Quran today. Different ways Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did things. We, may, we all, there's so many ways to do the same thing. And, this, and the things that we reject each other upon are mundane things that have no effect on our iman and our Allah, but rather on human you know, desires and our likes and dislikes. It's a time that we overlook these things. Look at what is common between us. You and your brother or your neighbor have an issue, whether they're Muslim or not. Let us see. Instead of looking at the difference, what, 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 what is similar between us? Build upon similarities, husbands and wives. You have conflict in your home. Forget the differences. Focus on the good things, the things that makes you happy, the things that you are good with together, and build upon that. Very often we tend to build on differences, and such we grow apart rather than build on similarities and which will cause us to grow closer. For us to do that, we must learn to forgive. Show mercy upon the other, for we want them to show mercy upon us. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the ends of these ayat in Surah Al-Imran, Kuntum khayran ummatin ukhrijat linnasi ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, You are the best community ever raised for humanity. We are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are the best of the ummah. On the day of Qiyamah, most of the people who will enter Jannah will be from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed favored this Ummah. Allah has made it so easy for us to gain enormous amount of blessings. And it is a time, today can be that day, that we all go upon this path that I want to be a muttaqoon. I want to be a person of taqwa. 
I want to be a Muslim as a Muslim should be, following in the footsteps of our righteous predecessors, as the Sahabas of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and our righteous Muslims until today, who would overlook all of these differences and be the best of the Ummah. Which means we shouldn't be people out there uttering, uttering foul words, reacting in animalistic manner to people because they are being them. Subhanallah, there were a case a couple of years ago in France where some kuffar, they decided to you know, make imagery of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very vulgar manner, which is terrible, obnoxious. And, and a teacher in the classroom decided to teach it in the classroom. One of these students went home and their relatives saw this, got so angry, picked up a machete, went into the middle of the street and cut the head off of the teacher. Is that the actions of Muslims? Is this the way how we are supposed to behave? Did we see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraging this kind of behavior? I'm not saying we shouldn't be angry. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be displeased. But Islam teaches us better ways of doing things. In the world that we're living today, we must be cognizant, we must be conscious, and be responsible for our actions because when a Muslim does something, this is the reality. When a Muslim does something, it's not against you. It's against the entire ummah. We carry the responsibility of the entire ummah upon all of our shoulders. And we have to take that responsibility. Your actions in the, in the public out there is not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of Islam. It's a reflection of over 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. Take that responsibility and stop crying about it. Are we crying because the kuffar are being kuffar? The way that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us they're going to be? Are we crying that they are being the people or the kind of enemies they are to us? We know this. And we're supposed to act accordingly. Spread Islam in a manner that is conducive to how Islam is supposed to be spread. Bring in awareness and goodness, not only in our words, but in our actions. Be people of taqwa in everything that you do, from the way you do your business, from the way you conduct yourselves in school from the way you behave on the street or in the privacy of your home, on your privacy of your phones, communicating with other people. All of these times we need to be people of taqwa. And just to remind you on this concept of brotherhood and togetherness, one of the things, my dear brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for which He closes the door of barakah, is when People among themselves, their blood relatives, they cut the blood relations between each other. And we have that so rampant within the Muslim community today. Our brothers and our sisters, our aunts and our uncles and our fathers and our children, how often do we have this problem? We don't speak to each other because of some problem. Do not do that, my dear brothers and sisters. Because if we want to build a community of togetherness, of unity, Number one, as adults, we need to show that in our home. As fathers and mothers, as parents, make our home one of togetherness. Show our children how to be together. For the family is the basic unit of the building block of society. And if our families are united, then our communities will be united. And if our masajid and our communities are united, the ummah will be united. So my dear brothers and sisters, as a reminder of a few things I would have reminded us here today. Number one, have taqwa of Allah. This is part and parcel of being a Muslim. In every aspect of your life, in everything that you do, everywhere that you go. Number two, remember that we are one brotherhood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this ni'mah of uniting us. Uniting us in everything that we are doing today. In, in obedience to Him. And as such, continue doing the goodness of what is happening globally and be aware of what is happening to Muslims around the world. Be aware of it. Alhamdulillah, today with the ease of access of information, that's no longer a difficulty. Do not be locked up in a cocoon. Knowledge is power. And the more we know, the more we can do. Number three, as we are aware of the Muslims around the world, use this as a time 
to reflect upon ourselves how I can improve, how I can be better, how I can contribute to the unification and the strengthening of the ummah in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, number four, remember that we are the best of the ummah. We are the best of nations. This is a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Somewhere along the way, many of us have lost the sense of being the best. Of striving to be the best. Not to look down upon others, but to own this responsibility that Allah has given to us. We need to start acting and behaving like we are the example of the entire world. We work, and it's about time that we start trying to be once again. This is the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unify the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unify our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eradicate the enmity and the differences between us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our actions in every aspect of our life to be ones of taqwa and iman. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hatha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursaleen, Habibina wa nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa manihtada bi ihsan ila yawmiddin amma ba'd. Allahum alimna ma yanfa'una, wa anfa'na bima alamtana, wa zidna ilma bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Allahum inna nasaluka ulman nafi'an wa rizqan tayyiban wa amala mutakabbala. اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغناء اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك العلم النافع ورزقا طيبا وعمل متقبلا اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين وفي يمن وفي أفغانستان وفي عراق وفي الصين وفي بورما وفي كل مكان اللهم انصرنا واهدنا واحفظنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا على صراط المستقيم واحفظنا عليها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر واقيموا الصلاة